412 fizz buzz. So fizz buzz is a classic, if not the quintessential um, software engineering algorithm question. <clears throat> and essentially um, what you have to do is if you're given a number divisible by three and five, you return fizz buzz. <clears throat> If you, you return fizz if it's divisible by three and buzz if divisible by five. So this is a variation of fizz buzz. There's all kinds of um, ways and to ask fizz buzz. Um, but in this question, you're given an integer n and you have to solve from every uh, integer one up to n and you have to put as your output a list of strings. So for instance, if your input is three, you have to start at one and one is indivisible by three and five or five. So you just write, you just add the number one and then you add two and then you add fizz because it's divisible by three. So the most common and simplest variation of fizz buzz is when you're given one number and you just have to print out fizz or buzz or fizz buzz. Um, but in this version, you have to iterate through a bunch of numbers, and then you also have to turn a list of strings. So um, there's a couple of things to look out for. Um, but the first thing you have to know is how the modulo, it's spelled like, modulo how the modulo operator works <clears throat> um that's like a key factor into solving this problem um after that we are going to iterate through all up to n and what you have to be careful of here is that if you get something like the number three and it's divisible by three and five, it's gonna also check if it's three and then also check if it's five. So you just wanna check it once and then you have to use like an if else. <clears throat> so um, make sure to use if else. So the first thing is how the modulo operator works. So essentially the way the modulo operator works is if um, what it gives you is the number the first number which is like maybe it's two and then if you take the modulo of that you'll it'll equal zero if there's if it's if this one is divisible into this one and then there's um, nothing left over so this is like the perfect operator for this fizz buzz problem because if something isn't divisible by three, or I mean, I'm sorry, is divisible by three and is divisible by five, it'll be both um, modulo three, it'll equal zero, and modulo five, it'll equal zero. Um, this isn't going to be right. Um, So um, basically it works at this. It's a, the first number, number, and then the modulo, which means um, divided by second number gives you the remainder. If it doesn't divide in equally, if it divides in equally, it'll give you a zero. Okay, um, so we will see how this works, but let's first set this up so that we can run it and not get an effort. So that we can run this and not get an error. Um, let me make a new array list because this is what the method signature is asking for. It's asking for a list of strings in return. So I'm going to have to return that. And then we're going to iterate, iterate through everything up to n, which means um, starting at 1, i less than or equal to n, uh, i plus plus.
So here we're iterating through all of them and we have to make sure if we use if else, So basically, we're going to say um, if this i modulo 3 equals 0, if i divided by 3 is 0, and i divided by 5 equals 0, what are we going to do? We are going to add to our list this fizz buzz here. I'm going to say answer add this here. Um, now we have to make sure to use else if um, because um, we don't want it to add um, twice, we want it to add only once. So for instance, if it's something like 15, it'll add fizz buzz on and then fizz because it'll be divisible by three. So we only want to enter this if the first one wasn't true. I modulo of three equals zero. So it, that means it's just divisible by 3. We are going to just add fizz. <clears throat> and then else if i divided by 5 equals 0. There's no remainder. We're going to add buzz. Oops. And if we get there and it's not divisible by the, any of those, we are just going to add i. And so an easy way to convert this integer to a string is if we just concatenate it with a blank string, and that will convert it to a string without really doing any other conversion typing. And it'll add it to there. OK, so we did use if else and let's see we could run that and it should work and I'll submit and it gives me an okay runtime um, but let's try to make it faster this is something like a little sort of a Java trick that I like. Instead of using this else if, what we can do is, I'm just going to use if. I'm just going to have to check every single one. And then I'm just going to do oh, here. Um, what you can do is you can name your for loop. So I'm going to just name my for loop um, go here, and then I'm going to put a co uh, colon. And so if I enter this if clause, I'm just going to say continue, and it's going to go right here. And otherwise, I'm going to do the same here and the same here. And then if it doesn't reach that, it's going to add that. So let me run this. And I'll submit it. And you can see it gives me a much faster runtime and better memory usage. OK, um, I think that's it. So. This is just like a sort of helpful thing to do if you ever really just want to like explicitly. And so go here obviously doesn't mean anything. I just named it that. Um, you can call that loop whatever you want, but you could always use this naming convention and you can just go right to it. Okay, thank you. Bye.